Have you ever wanted to make your scratch game more dynamic and engaging by adding cool knockback effects? To get started, let's open up the gun sprite. And duplicate our original costume and call it suit. And change our original costume to gun. Go back into our suit costume and let's make a line pointed outwards. Make sure you get this circle and make another line and keep doing that until you reach it all the way back and then connect the two original, well the, the original line with the new line. And then put it in the back layer and then fill it with like an orangish color or whatever color. I'm going to go with this color. And let's pull out when I receive suit. And when I receive suit, switch to costume suit, and then switch to costume gun when the green flag is clicked, and add a weight 0 0.1 seconds, and then switch to gun in the when I receive suit. And now we have a nice little part of well costume changing that makes it definitely a lot more dynamic. So. To add knockback, the first thing we need to do is when the enemies are touching us, they won't move. Let's head into the enemy sprite. Let's put an if around move speed steps. And if not touching player, then we move. So that way, whenever the enemies are touching us, they won't move towards us and go right on top of us. Okay, let's head into our player sprite and let's pull out our movement, everything that making us move. So, and let's put, bring out an or, and let's have if W T pressed or up arrow pressed, then we'll change Y by 2. Then if S or down arrow press, go negative 2 Y. And then if uh, D or right arrow is pressed, then we move, at, change X by 2. And last one, if T A is pressed and left arrow press then we change x by negative 2. Okay, let's make a new variable for this right only. Let's call it speed x. Let's create another variable called speed y for this right only as well. Okay. Let's also make another variable called it speed for this right only. Set speed to 2 and then let's add change x speed x change bring out to change speed x and change speed y next to our change y by and change x and copy the numbers in the if then and let's pull out our change x and y and let's Delete all of them except one change x and one change y. And let's add change x by speed x and change x by speed y. Okay, now if you play it, you should be able to move around. But here, oh. Make sure you do or instead of and. I'm going to switch that over real fast. Okay, now if you press the green flag, you should be moving, but you're moving like you're going everywhere. Zoom, zoom. So, we need to add some friction. To do that, we need to set speed X and speed Y to themselves times by a lower number so they get lower. 
So like a decimal number. So something less than one. So let's bring out a set speed x. And let's also bring out a set speed y. And let's pull out the multiplication operator. And let's times put a 0 0.5 in each of the first slot in the operator. And then the speed x and speed y in their accumulated values. And move the change speed x and change speed y at above the set speed x and speed y. So now the movement is really smooth and is very functional and the enemies stop when they're touching us so i think we're ready for the enemies to start doing some knockback to do this let's start by creating a new variable call it player knockback x for all sprites Let's create another variable. Let's call it player knockback y and for all sprites as well. Okay, let's go into the projectile sprite and let's bring out a cosine and a sine operator and put direction in that and then we need to change player knockback x change not set change player knockback x and change player knockback y um x with for sine and y for cosine and let's times that by a variable so let's create a new variable. Let's call it gun knockback for all sprites. Set gun knockback when I when green flag clicked to three or five. We'll play around with it later. And then let's times the sign direct um by gun knockback and the cosine by gun knockback. Now let's change x and y by player knockback x and player knockback y. And let's set player knockback x and player knockback y. We're kind of doing the same thing as our movement here. So I'm going to duplicate our multiplication operators and put their right value the right variables and I'm going to actually times them by 0 0.75 to add a little bit more like of a push and then in the projectile sprite let's bring the change player knockback x and y right after we point in direction and now you might be like why are we moving in the direction we're shooting. Well, sine and cosine pushes us in the direction if we change by that number. So let's actually change gun back to negative 10. And now we have a really nice big push backwards. Okay. It's time for the enemies to do the knock deal some knockback. To do this, we need to do similar. Let's hide all the variables and let's go into the enemies sprite. And let's create a new variable. Let's call it enemy knockback, just like gun knockback. But let's set it for this sprite only because each enemy type will have a different knockback. So let's set enemy knockback to costume number for now. And let's change um, player knockback and 
player knockback X and player knockback Y by when you do the same thing sine or cosine sine for X cosine for Y and then when you choose direction sine of direction cosine of direction and let's times it by we're going to times it by our enemy knockback and let's also times it by negative one and see what happens so now we'll move it backwards but we'll see what backwards is in this case so let's actually times it by negative three just to add a little bit more of a push and let's do that whenever we're touching the player so let's add bring in an if then else block and let's replace it with the our move our not touching player if then and now let's wait for the enemy to come touch us oh no and whoa what's going on so it might look kind of confusing at first but our issue is actually kind of simple we well let's add a wait time between the time they attack us so let's add a one second wait time and now we can see it a little bit better they're moving it towards us them towards them so we need to set it to th times by three rather than negative three and now they will push away because they're pointing in a different direction they're pointing at us when you go the opposite direction and the negative number will do that let's actually wait 0 0.8 seconds just so that way they can attack us just a little bit more and they don't wait there so long in one spot after they hit us yeah uh, I'm starting to get a disapprove of all the upside down enemies. So to fix that, let's go to uh, set rotation style to don't rotate block, and let's put that when I start as a clone. With the enemies right, and now they don't rotate, and it looks real nice. This looks real great. So don't hesitate to experiment with knockback in your game. Or and try seeing if you can even add it to other games, and see how you can, it can take your gameplay to the next level. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.